from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to color. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody, to Breakfast with Bob. Not quite Kona Edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas. As fuels go longer, Hoka, let's fly. Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot, the original triathlon brand, Premium Plus Sports, Quintana Roo, Mission Pacific Hotel, and beautiful Oceanside. And, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. We have now raised $147 million in our first 30 years. Our next guest coming off a spectacular season that he, uh, by especially by coming in fourth at the Ironman World Championship from Australia, Mr. Max Newman joins us. Max, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for having me on, Bob. So, Max, it's not that often that somebody goes to Ironman Western Australia and goes like 48, 12, 410, 241, 745, and then basically does the same thing in Kona. Usually people go a lot <laughs> slower in Kona. They went 48, 411, two minute faster in the run, and 744 in, in Kona. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I obviously had my best day I've ever had in a sport in Kona, which is which is always good when you're on the biggest day of the calendar. So um yeah, I think over the last three or four years, I've just slowly Slowly improved over the Ironman distance. I think it takes a, a lot of time to really nail it. And uh, I think three years, probably COVID was probably a blessing for us because we needed a bit of time to, you know, get used to used to the distance. And um, yeah, Kona sort of happened at the perfect time. I was about three years into Ironman sort of um, training. So yeah, I couldn't ask for more really. Well, early on, was it the goal to get to the Olympics? Because like 52 starts, seven podiums, two wins, 2013 yeah. to 19. I'm guessing the goal was, okay, I want to I want to get to potentially Tokyo. Yeah, I guess every every young fella in Australia, it's, it's sort of the natural progression is, is you want to go to the Olympics. Um, I mean, I never really gave it a, a proper good crack. I'd love to go back and do it. <laughs> But now that my swim is um, actually decent. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's just a natural progression here. And I think um, uh, it's very hard uh, to sort of get in the system. Um, like, I haven't ever received a cent from our federation. So, it's like. Really? It's, yeah, it's it's um, it's crazy here. I just, I think, um, yeah, I, I personally struggle. I know other people in there have done well but i think it also limits you to that one distance whereas i think other federations like Nor norway for example or other other federations like that have sort of implemented the two long course and short distance yeah and i feel like if if federations could could get around that i feel like you can't fail but at the moment they're competing against each other and it's um it's reckon it's just ruining the youth in our sport i think it's um, so hard. It's so yeah, hard because yeah. the reality is you, you know, you find, you try out, you, you get into the sport, you come from a, you know, run background or swim background, you get into the sport and then, you know, it's like, okay, you have to make a choice. You have to be yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you have to be short course. That's it. And, you know, you mm. need to sort of experiment to find out, you know, maybe I'm better ex terra. Maybe I'm better at 70.3, yeah, yeah. but you don't know yeah. until you try yeah, you get you get no freedom. I think that's the that's the problem. It's just like you either have to do this or you do that. There's no there's no sort of choice. And if you even if you try to do long course, it's very frowned upon. I think. Um, and like these these guys are making are making nothing out of this ITU stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess it's. I don't think it's changing anytime soon. So you either you pick the Olympic path or you pick the the long course path, and um, it's hard to combine two in Australia. 
so, so Max, when it comes to the the uh, pursuing your Olympic dreams, you, it doesn't sound like the Federation gives you a lot of support. Are you pretty much on your own to get to events and things like that? Yeah, well, I've if you get in there from when you're young, it's a lot easier. But I never, I was never really, yeah, handed the opportunity. Um, I guess I had a few <laughs> a few run-ins with um, the really old school coaches here, and they're they're stuck in the the eighties. And um, if you don't do it, do what you're told. You basically um, you're not going to get funding. So I don't think I was that sort of person <laughs> no. who um, who sort of likes having a boss sort of sort of thing um so i sort of early on realized that it wasn't for me and uh, i didn't really want to pursue it even though i would i would love to go there and give it a crack um it's just not something i i felt comfortable doing and i didn't really want to invest all my time and effort um into a coach who would make (laughs) four times the amount you'll ever make in your career so it's um yeah it was hard it was a hard decision but uh i think it's paid off Oh, obviously it's paid off. So yeah. what was your first longer distance race? And did you feel right away? Oh my God, this is where I need to be. Yeah, it was during COVID um, when we were sort of deciding what to do there when I mean, there's no racing. And I think Cairns up north of Queensland there was the only race that was sort of happening. Yeah. So we sort of just decided to to knuckle down for six months and have a good run into um into Cairns um and yeah they delayed it to September because of COVID and up there in September it's like 36 degrees and like 100% humidity it, it's, <laughs> it's it, it was more brutal it's more brutal in Kona for sure it, it's just crazy in September so um yeah I, I did my slowest Ironman I think up there just because of the conditions were just hellish um I just remember on the bike you, you couldn't cool yourself down because of the aero helmet and it was you were just cooking in the in the uh on the ride there and um yeah i hope to never race in conditions like that again but um i mean it was a good a good first experience of the distance and uh you I won it led well into yeah i won but it was it was lo- <laughs> we, we were locked down it was basically one state in queensland was allowed to race um but still it was a great experience and from yeah. there i think um i just progressed on to well, i raced a lot locally but i progressed on to i guess it progressed on to kona in the two years later well, it, you, you, it, when I look at that, so you've won that race three years in a row, right? 2021 and 22, Cairns? Yeah, 2021 and 22, yeah. And um, <laughs> I think I'll just keep trying to do a Cam Brown. <laughs> I think I'll just try to make a legacy out there. Until exactly. I lose, I just keep going. Yeah, yeah, tell, yeah. tell other yeah. people you don't really want to go. Just, yeah, it's it's, it's really only fun. Yeah, you never, you never put all your cards out there, but um, yeah, we'll see. I probably will be there. I love it. <laughs> Uh, so before that though, you had jumped into obviously 18 and 19, you had jumped into some, some, you know, halves and some 70.3s and had some good results with like an 18, uh, what third in Sweden and, um, second in Noosa and Elsinore, your fifth. So you're probably getting the thought that, okay, this is a little, a little more to my liking. I control my own destiny. I can hire my own Mm -hmm. coach. I can put whatever logos I want on my kit. Mm-hmm. You, you sort of become your own person. Uh, I, I bet the yeah. freedom was something you really enjoyed. Yeah, I think during the junior years, it was a lot of traveling away from family. Um, yeah. And I, I soon realized I was, I was very much a homeboy. And uh, I love it where I live and love training here. So I used to get pretty homesick when I, when I was away. And uh, yeah, I, I lived uh, lived away for like, six months a year um just trying to make <laughs> trying to make a little bit of pocket money and uh right. yeah I, I guess it just progressed onto the halves um yeah i just bought a really cheap bike time trial bike and uh yeah i got a couple like you said a couple of thirds in elson or uh, yeah. the fifth in elson i think it was i think it was my first sort of race i did all right at um and a couple of races in sweden um but, you know, it was, it was enjoyable. I like I like doing the traveling around and um, yeah, racing these uh these sort of smaller events. Um, but yeah, I think this year is more focusing on the on the bigger ones. So um, yeah. 
the transition from, because here you are focusing on Olympic format and actually a mm. lot of the Olympic races are actually more sprints as well. And they're moving towards the, you know, mixed relay and the rest of it. And then you're going, okay, I'm going to do 70.3. And then I'm, I got to transition from that to something double that distance. Mm. <laughs> what was the transition it, like from going 70.3 to, all right, I, I'm doing, I'm doing a full. Yeah. I, I think we were more pushed into it. I think more just the fact that there was no other racing happening in Australia yeah. at the moment or even around the world. So it was right. like sort of a forced move into it um, to save the, save the year sort of thing. Um, and I mean, we didn't change. I, I did change coach during that period, but um, we didn't change too much. We just, we just did do a lot more, a lot more Ks um, on the bike just because we had no idea how to train for one of these things. So we really knuckled down um, on the bike and doing these, these huge days, um, that I would never even attempt to do now. Um, <laughs> like what? I don't what know. I've seen, oh, just back to back days on the bike, like big, big days, like four or five hours back and that up another six hours, like five days in a row. And, um, <laughs> big, like massive, massive brick sessions, um, on the weekends, um, like, you know, four and a half hours solid, on almost getting 180 to 200k um and then jumping off and running like 35 40k um doing that every like three or four weeks i think it was um just trying to get the body um i guess figuring out what what the distance is all about um sure. but i don't think i don't think i'd ever <laughs> attempt that again we we just had every time i raced um, I would always get injured after the race because we, we definitely overtrained. You were so um, so it sounds like you and your coach are sort of learning together. Yeah, well, my bro- my coach is my brother. Um, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah, so we we sort of learned. He came from cycling background, um, oh, which is which, and he loves- explains the five hour days back to back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves he loves his cycling. Like he's a real cycling fanatic. Just follows a sport like a religion. Um, yeah. So yeah, he he came on board in before Cairns, and yeah, we really went hard on the on the cycling. But now he's learning; like he loves, he's obsessed more than me about triathlon, um, and he's he's learning. I think he really wants to learn about the swim next. Um, but yeah, he's learning. He he's uh, progressed over like you see over the last three years. We've had um, oh, so he's progressed success. as a coach as well. So yeah, yeah, it's a win win. You guys both. Are. So growing up was triathlon in your head? Uh, like, was it you grew up Craig, Craig Alexander, or Chris McCormick? Because that era, like 2007 to 2012 was, mm. you know, Maca, Crowey, Crowey, Maca, Crowey, Pete Jacobs, and then Rinny wins three Ironman World Championships. Was, was that sort of the motivator for you? Not really. I was in those sort of years. I was still in school. Mm. Um, so I was like, yeah. I sort of missed all that era, um, but I remember at school, the school started triathlon as like a, a subject yeah. Um, in like PE. And I remember they had started bringing some triathlon mags into the, the library, like the PE, the, the PE teacher. Yeah. Um, so I remember just reading a couple of them. When I, used to do, I used to race a fair bit of cross-country racing. Um, I remember reading those and I think that was literally probably <laughs> probably like lit a fire in me that was like, oh, triathlon looks pretty cool. Like you got these Maccas and these um, Craig Alexanders and like, yeah, yeah I, I think I literally think it was from from sort of that that was what really transitioned into from running into triathlon, um, right. literally having a couple of magazines in, in the library. <laughs> you know what's so funny about that? Macca and Crowey both had their problems with the Federation, <laughs> which is why. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One of the I read all about stuck, that. Yeah, what always stuck out to me with those guys is, you know, it, it's one thing to, to decide, hey, I'm going to be a professional triathlete. Like you said, being out, away from home for six months. When you're in Australia, if you want to, the racing was in Europe, the racing was in America. Mm. So it's not like you're going, oh, I'll go away for the weekend and do a race. It You're committed. Mm. You got you got to go yeah. away for you know for months at a time. You just can't afford to come back and go back in between. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's a commitment. When when you were doing junior yeah. races, were there age group races as well, or is it sort of the small little bubble of just the juniors racing? Um, yeah, I remember ju- we had a junior series in Australia. Um, looking back now, it, it seems it was massive when we we're doing it, but looking back now, it seems so insignificant and small. But I think. Um, 
I think this the old junior series in Australia was actually quite good, but I think it's yep. sort of they're trying hard to um, get it going again with Brisbane Olympics coming up. But um, I think it just went in a little bit of a rut the last couple of years. And I think um, triathlon Australia on a whole was really struggling to find like find some talent. Right. Um, we don't like we used to be such a powerhouse, and now it's um, it's really only a select few who are competing against right. against these Euros and, and Americans. And, yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's, it will happen. But, um, yeah, we did have a good pathway when we were junior. Um, but it, I, I guess it's um, like everything. It, it goes through phases, doesn't it? It goes through phases. And I think we yeah. saw when London was announced in 2012, all of a sudden the UK invested a ton, the Brown mm. brothers. And, you know, so when having Melbourne coming up in, what, 2032, mm. whenever that is, yeah, uh, you, you'll see more of an investment and you'll see some yeah. young talent coming in. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, when I look at uh, so this in 2021, you you win uh, what challenge Shepparton and you get cans again for your second time. And then you got the racing in Collins Cup had to be pretty darn good. Mm. Because again, yeah. you're still fairly new to long distance, and here you are at that Collins Cup in 2021, and it's you know it's everybody is there, every legend is there. Yeah, it was. I, I guess it was a bit overwhelming coming from from COVID. You know, locked up um, for so many months or even years, and uh, and then like coming over to Europe, and it, we came to Europe, and everything's like normal. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know. Um, Right. Yeah, we come in. There's people everywhere. Like it was quite overwhelming, but uh, yeah, Collins Cup was was pretty cool. It, you know, we were in the green and gold um, in Team Internationals there. Um, I think it has a. I think it has a lot of potential. Yes. I'd tweak a few things. Like I yes. think everyone's saying the same thing. Um, but as a as an event, I really think it actually has. A lot of potential. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the whole idea of making it like a, you know, Davis Cup and that type of thing yeah. is really cool. Uh, I yeah. I don't know if I do the individual races. I don't know if I, I would maybe yeah. have everybody race in your team colors, but everybody's racing together like a regular race. Yeah, oh, I agree. And then you can have team tactics and uh, exactly sort of going down the path. I think that's where triathlon sort of heading. It has to head down a, t- a team's a team's pathway. That's yeah. it. That would, that would be the natural progression, I think, but I've yeah. taken its time. <laughs> and then you got to do Collins Cup again this last year, this year, 2022. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I love yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I think, um, well, yeah, there's rumors it, it's changing location. Um, but, uh, yeah, America, yeah, I think a new location. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think a new location would be pretty cool. Well, from what I've heard, the location is. I think it will be. Um, it's going to be awesome. It will be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how hard was it this year? Because you did, uh, you did Cairns, you did, um, uh, you did Kona, and you did Western Australia. So, three in one year. That's that's a big jump mm. from never having done one a few years earlier. <laughs> I, I actually did um, Saint George, but that was a DNF. Um, ah, yeah, that was a DNF. That was more like a brick session. It's probably oh, not. So, worth did you get through the got through the bike and then? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I got through the swim, the bike, and I think 30K the run. Oh, 30K? Uh, yeah, I think – well, I, I would have kept going, but my coach is on the phone. My parents were over there, but my coach – Mitchell was on the phone, yeah. my brother, and um, told me to pull it up. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, I just I just wasn't prepared. I didn't have enough build-up. I was a bit, bit injured in, in January, February, March, and I only had about six, four to six weeks of build-up. Um, and then we, we arrived only three days, four days before the race. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready at all. And it was, yeah, well, that was, it's that was a smart thing session. to do. It was smart to pull. The yeah. Car, yeah, yeah. You got a, you got a lot yeah. of season left at that point. It's only May. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you, you think it's the end of the world, but really it's, <laughs> it's so, such a long season and, um, yeah, we built onto cans. Um, and that was probably my one of my better races i've ever done um in terms yeah. of in terms of numbers numbers and um just power like raw power um it was very comparable to to kona this year um so we sort of knew that we were in good shape um and we just had to have a good good build up to kona and um 
we would have a good crack at uh I didn't expect it to be such a small front group, but I definitely thought we'd have a good crack at uh at the podium. Um so going in, so you yeah, thought was, like you a good chance at the podium in Kona. Going off cans, we definitely thought we had a chance at a podium. Yeah. Um, but just that we we definitely thought that we would come off the bike and there'd be 10 to 15 people around us. And then it was right. basically whoever had whoever had had the legs of the day. Um but yeah, that's not how how I don't think anyone would have picked out how Kona turned out this year. So um yeah, you race with with what turns up with what happens on the day. And uh I mean we, we would have changed a couple of things, but um yeah, I think uh progressing onto a couple of years like in the future, I think it's a good start. When you look at you know, the top four in Kona were all rookies, all you guys mm. were under Fredano's course record of 751. Um, Cam Worth was was eleventh, and he was the mm. first person who was over eight hours, which used to be the yeah, yeah. barrier. Someone goes under eight hours, they're they're a legend. It's like every bit top yeah. ten is all under all under eight hours. Uh, I mean, seriously, you're you're four minutes out of winning the Ironman World Championship, and you know you're, you're 740, 742, 743, 744. That is a close mm. finish top four. Usually we have. First, second, and then maybe third, but there's there's usually a gap in there. There's like a, a gap between you and Joe for fourth and fifth. Mm. But mm. you know, early on in that run, it was you, Christian, Gustav, all sort of running together, taking, you know, uh, did you feel like it was you against those two guys? Yeah, well, I, you could tell that um on the bike they just weren't worried about Laylo at all, which no. turned out to be it turned out to be a mistake. But um <laughs> Yeah, you could just tell they were, we were really um, – they were sort of just taking turns, but they weren't really I, – I was obviously just sitting on because I didn't, I didn't really need to do anything. Right. Um, but they were sort of just taking taking turns, but they weren't, you know, going at all hard. That was, right. you know, definitely preparing themselves for a fast marathon. Um, but, yeah, we, we get onto the run, and uh, I definitely heard that um, Christian was, was hurting a bit. This is literally from – kilometer one or two um just breathing hard just grunting and breathing <laughs> typical yeah. what christian and how christian rolls oh, um yeah. but yeah i just felt like Gustav. you know he looked incredible and, and he just was definitely definitely in control of that race yeah. um but yeah we're running with them and then they dropped it down to like 320 something pace coming back towards into into town yeah um and I saw my team manager, Bob, and I was like, oh, Bob, they're doing 320s. And uh, I, I sort of made the decision to, to drop back there thinking that Christian would, uh, would blow up at the end. Yeah. Um, so I, I sort of said goodbye to the win, but I definitely was running for, for the podium. I didn't expect Sam to eat either. <laughs> didn't expect no, Sam to hold on to second. I think Sam surprised himself. I mean, that was, that was, yeah. that was an amazing running 244. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's such a cool Yeah, race. he's never he's never even been close to no. to that marathon time. So um yeah, I think that he threw threw a spinner in the in the works there. And um I think it, that's what made the race uh super interesting was um just these these like dark horses that came from not nowhere, but uh definitely wasn't on anyone's radar before the race. And um right. I think that's what people love about sport is you is you know, you can't pick anything <laughs> and i think that's why kona is so such an attractive race to to media and to to spectators is because it's Big so time. unpredictable you yeah. never know you know you never know yeah when. exactly we've had guys come there who've never done an iron man before never never run a marathon before this guy yeah. on lear day back in 96 he breaks a course record <laughs> you know, like, yeah. said, who is this guy yeah Lucy wellington yeah. we didn't know what the heck she was and she wins the thing yeah. you know, three years in a row so it's yeah. that's what's so cool about that when mm -hmm. a star is born, which mm -hmm. when you think about it, that's you in the in this race. <laughs> Did you find yourself more recognition, more awareness, potentially more sponsors after that performance? Because one thing to do it at Cannes, it's another thing to do it in Cone. Yeah, um, I guess yeah. Even though I got fourth place, I think just because the fact that it was such a such a cool race. Um, yeah, it was it was quite cool. It seems like such a long time ago now, but um, <laughs> I know yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, fourth usually um in Kona 
no one really was I, I couldn't tell you who ever got fourth but i think just the fact that it was such a cool a cool race um it got the attention of of a few people and uh yeah yeah hopefully announce a few things <laughs> shortly but um yeah i think uh i think even this year i think will be a, ma- a massive race um it's still a world championship and uh no question yeah, I think it will almost, in terms of spectators, will almost be bigger. Um, oh, yeah. But I wish they had a – I think they made a mistake not bringing the women. I think it would have been even bigger, like a massive race if they had brought the, both the genders. But, I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah, I still think it will be a big race, yeah. Oh, it'll be huge. You know, I mean, every guy, every every top pro will will be there and hopefully we'll get – Oh, exactly. Uh, you know, you'll have Jan there. You'll have uh, yeah. Ray back from France, Rudy Von Bert. You'll have yeah. all these guys – Want to do it? The yeah. big question will be Gustav and Christian because of Olympic stuff, but uh, yeah, you know, even without them. Did you while you're out on the Queen Kyrie, like you said, Christian was was sounding not great early on, but that guy can suffer. I mean, mm. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Watched him, watched him in the. I'm sure you watched him in the Olympics too, and you're going, okay, mm. it's really hot. This is the biggest guy in the field, and a thousand mm. meters out, he's going. <laughs> yeah yeah no one else would have won that race he's the only guy that could have could have done no. what he did there in the olympics exactly um and i i knew that um because i knew that he was he was suffering there in the heat and uh with the a stations they were now like two oh, i don't know miles but they're like 2.5 to 3k apart yeah. so it was in um in kona so it was very very hard to stay cool like really hard um especially coming back that last 11 12k yeah. um it's it, with the with the tailwind it was really hard to stay cool and i i think i got within about 45 seconds of christian yeah and then um he must have just gone to some proper dark faces um <laughs> i mean he's the, he's probably the only athlete that could have could go that deep yes. in, in maybe Al, maybe ali brownley um but yeah, it's it was impressive to see him hold on there. Um, I think he really paid for it. It was it was hobbling a few days after, I think. So um yeah, yeah. he's an he's an absolute animal and uh, I think everyone's um grateful to have him around because he's definitely lifting lifting the sport. Well, taking the sport to another level, there's no question. Mm. What was the con- any conversation between you guys at the finish? You and Christian and um no i finish i don't remember too much because i remember gustav came up to me and he said something about i did a kit change in the in the um in the chain before the run and uh he said something something i won't say on here but it was quite funny and then um then i don't really remember too too much after that because i remember being like wheeled into medical and weighed and and then i I literally come to and i've got like two IVs and oh like God. six, six, seven doctors around me with like all this <laughs> stuff attached, attached to my heart and my, yeah, it was something up my bum and <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was, um, I really, uh, I didn't hydrate enough in that last probably 20 K. Um, cause I even looking back now, I remember having a ripping headache in the last 20 K. Yes. Now I just didn't get enough hydration, enough salt, sodium and, um, I really, really paid for it. My when I crossed the line, everything, my fingers and whole legs went numb and Oof. throbbing, and oh, it was um, really brutal. It took me about two hours to come to come to, and uh, oh. yeah, that's that's Kona though. It's um, yeah, that is Kona. No that one, yeah, no other race will probably get a permit to run a to run a, like a race in a, in a in a environment like that. So. Um, but you know, like I said, I think that's what makes it so special. What's funny about it is uh, a number. Well, it was, it was probably back in ninety. I don't know what year it was. Uh, Mark Allen had just won the race, and mm. McKeeley Jones was over there watching. Right, you know, she had won the Olympic silver and was over there watching the race. And here's a guy who won, and he's on a stretcher. Right, <laughs> his body is yeah. pulsing. And she just, yeah. they took him into medical. She just looked at me and was like, I will never do this. <laughs> you yeah. yeah, ended up winning it. But you're like, that's your yeah. winner who's on a stretcher. Yeah. I mean, you just finished, you just had the race of your life, your fourth place. You ran a 240 marathon, mm. you're 744. And you've got mm. uh, doctors around you and you've got two ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. It's not the most, it's not the most safest of sports, but I think, like I said, that's why people love Kona. 
I think yes. people love people just love seeing people like you know go to the absolute depths of like what's possible and um yeah I think that's why I will always be an attractive race. It's so mental. Uh, so what is this <clears> season for you? Not a hundred percent sure yet, but um I'll definitely start off with um Euro Open, PTO Euro Open. Oh good. Um early May. And then I'm sure after that, um in the next couple of months, but then I'll definitely probably do Singapore, um, PTO and then Nice and then after that. I'm not sure, yeah. but um Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably race maybe nine or ten times this year. So it's probably a lot, but um Well I've got a couple of a couple of goals to to kick, so um yeah, hopefully to stay uninjured. Well, and you want to win an Ironman World Championship. Exactly. I think that, I think that's yeah. I don't think you go there. I think you go there to win it, but I don't think you go there saying you want it, you're going to win it. I think it just happens on the day, right? With <laughs> with the right mindset. Yeah. Yeah, with the depth of the field, because you you can't. Yeah, exactly. The other guys are going to nah, do. Nah, you nah. don't know what's happening to them. You know, if you were happening. Eight hours. Was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the sport right now, you guys are in, really, it's a good era, right? With PTO and with, uh, with Ironman, with 70.3, with Challenge, with Clash, um, even the shorter distance stuff with Super League. There's so many options as a pro now that, you know, back in the day, I'm sure you were thinking, gosh, I think this is my only option here, trying to make the Olympic team. It, mm-hmm. It's got to be pretty cool for you looking at this going, okay, I can sort of decide, mm-hmm. I can control my own destiny, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, I remember racing a couple of those IT races, and I was like, "You're getting like nine hundred, nine hundred bucks," and you're like, "Oh, this is, this is great," you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, now you can actually, yeah, make a make a a good living, and uh, I think a lot of a lot of pros are now. Um, it's not just you know the top three, it's, right? Um, the depth is just it, it is good, and I think um, having all these different options is uh, is what's really driving this this push of of um making it a proper actual professional profession <laughs> um, so yeah i think uh any any juniors um looking at if they yeah, if you're not looking at doing this longer stuff um yeah i think you're missing out because um yeah i, I think you can you can do you can do olympics and this as well as i think what the pto is trying to do they're trying to you know bring long course down down and middle distance up and meet everyone in the middle. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think it's great. I think, um, I think people don't want to just go to, you're like, you can go to Sweden, but I don't think people want to go to like the Sweden races and, and race like one other person there. They want to come and race everyone at the same, at the same race. Well, so, and you look at it, you look at like PTO Canadian Open, people would look at it and go, okay, you were, you were eighth at a race and think, oh, well, that's, you know, eighth. Well, eighth mm. against the basically a world class, a world championship field, and mm. eighth place is probably more prize money than you would win at most, <laughs> at most, at most yeah, yeah. three or other races, right? It's that's really, yeah. and so you sort of have to look at results. I look at results totally different than I used to. If mm. someone finishing fifth and sixth at a at a seventy point three, I'll go, oh, oh, and then they finish sixth or seventh at a at a. Uh, um, at a PTO US Open or Canadian Open, and you're mm. going, wow, that's really good. Mm. I know yeah. the people in front of them were the best people in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um, yeah, I think it's just the whole event as well. It's um, it's when you get there, you know, the choppers. It's just the atmosphere. It creates yeah. such a a vibe there, and I think it's completely different to to any other race. Even even like here in Australia, it's um, you know, I love racing here, but it's just it doesn't have that that vibe. These big 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 yeah. races have and um i mean you have to travel travel to get to these races so yeah i think i think there's a there's definitely a big future and i think the pto is having a, a sort of transition year i think they said this year um and hopefully a bigger year in, in 2024 um so yeah we'll see how we'll see how it goes this year but i think um with yarn being his last year i think no yeah. matter <laughs> no matter where yarn goes i think there's going to be be a big field there um exactly. it might be a, a once in a, in a lifetime opportunity your last opportunity to to race him so um have you raced yeah, him i think it's going to be stacked i've never i've never no 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 oh that's a fucking yeah, yeah. you gotta go to the yeah so line, right? yeah so um 
I think a lot of people will. It, it, it might be the last time, you know. So, yeah, I, you, you just you just hope he's at his yeah. best. European Open, that'll be the Euro spot. Open, potentially Hamburg, and uh, yeah, oh, we'll yeah? see how we go. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Max, I'm glad you made the switch. Yeah, uh, that's mm. uh, that could be, it. Could be a bummer feeling like you're sort of you know on a little bit of a treadmill going nowhere. You know, like I've got mm. these races. I'm funding my own way there. They're telling me what to do. They're forcing me to wear certain things. It's it's having the freedom to to race the races you want to do and the way you want to do them, and having your brother as your coach. That's yeah. that's the best of all worlds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like to keep it in house. <laughs> well, uh, no, nah, but it works. Yeah, it works well. It's um, yeah. I think uh, yeah. Our, our whole our, our whole my whole sort of career works is everyone's sort of involved in the family, and that, you know, it's, it, it works well. Good Dad's retired, you. mum's finishing up, so you know. It's very cool. It's like with the uh, with Lucy and Reese. You know, Reese mm. became her coach and learned yeah, yeah. the sport, and obviously she's yeah. done pretty damn well. So it's yeah. you, know, you, you 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 need to be open. Your brothers, I'm sure, are learning from other coaches every day because as an athlete yeah. himself, he you know, he wants to learn and he transfers, yeah, yeah. You, which is great. Yeah, I think no one knows you better than you know the closest people in your life. So um, like you look at any athlete that's doing well at the moment, and they're all very very close with their coach. Right. Um, and I think that's that's what makes a difference these days. You know, just um. The coach knowing exactly how you feel when you wake up in the morning, um, talking to them all day long, um, seeing them a couple of times a week. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Big time. Now, who's the better cyclist? You well, him. not Mitchell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mitchell, used, Mitchell used to be about my height, but he used to be 10 to 12 kilos lighter. Oh. So he was very a really skinny, really skinny guy. He used to be a real good climber. But um, no, nah, he hasn't touched a bike in three or four years, so. Um, um, yeah, I definitely so get he has you days. do those five hour days back to back to back, and he and he's not doing them. Uh, he's on the scooter sometimes, usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scooter, yeah. And I, he got glandular, like, glandular fever, and that just oh. ruined him. And um, yeah, he hung it up after that, I think. So that's great. Well, he can he, he can live through his coaching, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what he says, <laughs> Max. Thank you so much for taking time, it's a pleasure to get to chat with you. I uh, love what you bring to the sport. And I think you're right. I think, I think uh, you're going to see a resurgence in Australia. I think having someone mm. like yourself have the success you're having Melbourne coming up, there'll be more of an investment in, in the youth mm. of Australia, because, you know, you think back to Welchie winning Ironman, McKeeley winning Ironman, mm. Rennie winning Ironman. There's just so many great Australians that have had so much success there and in just in the sport itself. So it, 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 you, you have everything there for the athletes. Too, mm, exactly. Yeah. You know, you've got it all. So it's, mm. uh, it, it'll come back. Yeah. I hope so it, it, it comes and goes, it's, um, just a natural, that's what happens in sport. It, um, no question. Sports have their turns. Yeah. 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 Max Newman has been our guest, everybody again, Brexit Bob, not quite cone edition. Max, I really appreciate taking time. Pleasure to get to chat with you. Thanks very much, Bob. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Tune in next time. We'll catch you.